we want to be able to provide a safe way for people to be able to go through their transformations. And so there are three main things that you need to consider when you are putting together your signature offer and whether or not you've actually already done it or you're in the process of doing it. It's, you know, real, if you've already done it, look at these three things and make sure that they are cohesive, especially if you've done it and you're getting ready to launch it and you haven't quite done it yet. Um, and especially if you're in the process of creating it and getting your coaching pro program established, it's really important that you do take these three elements into consideration. And so number one is what is aligned with your needs. So first off, we, we want to make sure that everything is always aligned with where we are trying to go in our life, right? Um, creating a program that fits that that trajectory and what is happening now in our life. Your needs are super important because at the end of the day, this is your business and you are the foundation for these transformations that you're providing and you have to take your needs into consideration. You need to really look at your work style. You need to think about what your day is like when it is a well aligned day. Like, do you wake up, in, wake up in the morning, you know, you don't hit snooze, you wake up and you're ready to start the day and, you know, maybe you get your coffee and have your morning routine and meditate and do all of those wonderful things. But then when it's time to work, you're excited to work and you get down to business and you work all day long and then you spend time, you know, doing things you love after you're done working, whether it's with the family or getting out in nature or uh, going to the gym, whatever it is, meeting up with friends. And then, you know, you go to bed and you're like done and you're happy and you start all over again and you love it, right? You love waking up and you love what it is that you do and you feel energized. That is going to be very different. Like the container that you create is going to be very different than say you're a person that, you know, wakes up or maybe you have to hit snooze a bunch of times because your biological um, clocks and processes don't have that quick energizing thing in the morning. And maybe it takes you a little bit to get going. And maybe if you're like one of my ADHD people, like me, we don't have that, that dopamine. Our bodies don't produce enough dopamine. So really what spurs us into action are things like deadlines and meetings and, you know, uh, scheduled launches and scheduled trainings. Those are the kinds of things that really get us motivated and going. And it doesn't mean we don't like our work. It just means that this is kind of what we need to be able to get up and get moving and get going. So just right there, you can see that the kind of programs that you're going to create are going to be different just based on your needs, just on that part alone, right? And then what if the kind of person that you are is, uh, you know, an open heart, empathetic, where you're taking on, um, you're able to hold space for people so they can really process through their emotions. But in doing so, you, when you're holding that space, you kind of take on those emotions. A lot of us empaths and healers, you know, we do that. And then maybe it's even part of your work. Maybe you don't know that you need to do that, but you know that afterwards you need to go do some grounding exercises. Maybe you need to take a nap. Maybe you need to go go out in nature before you can go on and help the next person. So that right there is something that really needs to be considered considered when you're creating the container. Now, for example, when I did my, I still do orgasm coaching, but when I had my group program in the orgasm coaching, it was really important that I had a good half hour to an hour before the program began, um, before each of the sessions began. And I also needed time afterwards. I needed about an hour or so afterwards to really integrate back in and get myself grounded. And the thing is, COVID hit, the pandemic hit, and then my kids were home all the time and I didn't have that opportunity. So I had to restructure the the container that I used to, to help people in so to be able to facilitate. And I couldn't do group coaching anymore. I could only do one-to-one -one because it was the only way I could really um, create that container that people uh, needed, that I needed, That right? Like it was the only way that worked with my circumstances to be able to be able to show up so that way I could continuously help people through their transformation. So it's important that you do take all of these things into consideration and there's no right or wrong. It is okay if you're that person that, you know, is an early bird riser and then poops out at two o'clock and you just can't do anything anymore. 
create the containers around those needs, right? Maybe you're, you figure out how to do your work. Maybe you're one of those people who's like, you know what? I'm just going to work Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, because Mondays and Fridays, I need to be there for my kids and I can't, you know, devote anything more than that. But if you're, you know, doing the Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and you still need all of these other ways to recharge so that way you can, you know, help people, you, you need to put that in first, because if you burn out, your business is done. So you need to make sure that above everything else, you are putting your needs first, you're taking a good look at what your needs are and figuring out how to create the program that is best going to support you with your needs, with what your individual needs are, not just what your big vision is. Don't get me wrong. That big vision, it's super important, right? Like don't create a program that's not aligned with your big vision because what are you working for, right? But when I'm talking about the container of your actual program, what put your needs first because you are necessary. You are the soul of what, you know, creates that transformation for your people. So Take care of you first. Remember, put that oxygen mask on you before you help other people with their oxygen mask. All right. And then next is what is aligned with your client's needs? A lot of times we think we are doing that, obviously, because we know exactly what they need to do to the steps they need to take to get them from point A to point B. At least hopefully you have and you put that into consideration when you're developing your program. But a lot of times what we neglect and or forget is that especially especially if the program that you are doing is something that is so innately a part of who you are if you are that person that has a way with words and color and creative creativity and just being bold and you know understanding that you know, finding joy in bright clothing is going to light you up and you want to have pass on that joy to other people. Uh, a lot of times we forget that people don't start there, right? People are often starting way before that point. They want to get to that point and that's why they're so attracted to you. Sometimes we create these programs that we know these are the steps and we know that if they do this, then this, then this, then this, it's going to create this transformation. But what we often forget is that people need time to integrate it. You know, this is our business. So we are living and breathing this business. We know, you know, we're thinking about it all the time. But other people that are joining, this is an aspect that they are working on in their life. And they are oftentimes do not have the time or the bandwidth or the opportunity or the space or whatever is necessary to live and breathe that every day, right? So sometimes they're only able to dedicate, you know, an hour a week to show up to your coaching program um, to do that, but they're still gonna need time to integrate. And if we're giving them too much to do and expecting them to make these big jumps from week one to week two, um, you know, or two, three, three, or whatever week it is for, or month to month, and we don't give them that time and that space to integrate what it is that we are helping them through, it's not that they don't benefit from your program, but it's oftentimes that they don't even see the results of the true benefit of the program until much later. And so it is, and then sometimes these breakthroughs that they have are now outside of this container that you have provided. And sometimes they feel a little bit lost and it does us a, does our clients a better service if we can provide the container especially if you're dealing with people that have trauma, right? Um, trauma comes and unravels in its own time and space. And oftentimes it unravels in the silences. And so it's not going to be happening necessarily in that safe container that you provide each week, but it provide it happens in the breaks in between those, those opportunities. And we need to make sure that we are, are allowing time for them to be able to process that with us. So do make sure that you're ta taking into consideration the process time, the integration time that your clients need to really get that transformation that you're helping them get. And so that is something that is absolutely necessary in order to think about what this container that you're providing. So part of the container is a time frame, right? We want to make sure that the time that you are allowing this transformation for people really does provide the space and opportunity for them to take those steps to get them from point A to point B. And then lastly, but not least, 
<laughs> what is aligned with your tech skills? So this is something that um, all of my clients struggled with before coming to me. And so it is something that I'm very cognizant with when I work with them and help them design their, or I help, I don't help them design, they create their containers, but when I help them through that process of creating it is also understanding their tech skills. Because especially those of us who are doing uh, transformative work with people, when we are working with someone and they are inevitably going through the transformation, we ourselves are also going through the transformation. It's the way energy works, right? As you move and transmute energy, it, you know, energy can't be created or destroyed. It only can be changed and altered and moved. And what happens is as we're helping them through that, we're, we ourselves are, are transforming and changing and growing. And oftentimes, if we're helping people clear trauma, we're also clearing trauma at the same time. But when that energy moves out, it now leaves a void for other energy to come in and fill it. And technology, whether you like it or not, is just another form of energy, right? It is, you know, whether it's a program or a software, and you know, especially if it is, you know, dealing also with your program that is creating this now void in this transformation, this energy void inside of this program. A lot of times I see that technology will kind of go to help you get solid in this transformational process because that's what I swear that's what technology um, mishaps are for. It's to help you learn, use the the skills that you have just now created for yourself and step into them and take ownership of them and then confidently work through the technological mishap. And so I wanted to bring this up because I do think it's important that we do really think about where we are with our technology skills. Sometimes we wanna create these amazing online programs that have a portal where people can come in and communicate and there's videos and handouts and worksheets and all of that. And it's great, right? Like I myself, I have one. I have one for the Success Creator Academy where they can log in and, and get access to materials and replays of videos and uh, other you know stuff in there. But you know, I do have the technology, the technological skills to make that happen. If I was starting out and I didn't have that, that would definitely be a consideration when I'm thinking about what kind of program I'm going to create because there are going to be technological mishaps along the way. That is just the way it works. It is, you know, tech was created by humans and humans make fought, make mistakes and we make mistakes and that's just the, what just what happens and that happened today i made the mistake with my microphone as i was talking about this and discovered the mistake of the microphone when i was talking about technological mishaps so you know they they just happen and i've been going through a big trans transformation process as i'm helping my clients right so i have this big opening for technological mishaps to be happening all the time right now but um I'm learning, you know, I'm using my skills and I'm not getting flustered and I'm working through them. So that is one of the things that I want you guys to actually take into consideration when you're doing this. And remember, keep going back to those that first point, which is having everything aligned with your needs. Like, what do you need to support you with through this, the technological mishaps that are going to be happening along the way? Because they're going to happen. And if you don't have a framework and a support system, um, to be able to help you through it, then, you know, you want to think about that before you're starting to, to do your offer as well, because they, it is going to happen. You're going to have those things that like just completely flabbergast you and get you all flustered and frustrated, but it's just that, that what happens when you are transforming energy. So that gap needs to be filled. And if you are clearing away chaos, usually chaos will take its place. And since you cleared away chaos in this form is going to take on that chaos is going to take on another form. And so um, I find that as you as a trauma informed <laughs> coach, right, as you really work through a lot of your personal trauma um, and you have these other skills that normally when you're first kind of dealing with it, the, tra the, the, the chaos that ensues is usually a personal based trauma that ensues that then derails you. And then as you get better with those personal skills, 
one of the next ones that come up. It's either going to be a financial or it's going to be a tech technological chaos that comes in to f get you all flustered and make you help you work through it. it. And basically, anytime a problem comes up, it's just an opportunity to improve and get make yourself better, right? <laughs> so um, when those technology mishaps happen, you'll be like, oh, wow, that's a sign that I've been clearing away the, some of the chaos from my life. Oh, yes. Thank you, universe, for showing me I'm on the right track. So that's just a one way to reframe it. Um, or you can just, you know, metaphorically pull your hair out and scream and cry because <laughs> that also works too. Um, but so I do, I do think it's really important that you, you keep these three things into consideration when you are thinking about your program and how you're going to deliver it and how you're going to show up and how you expect other people to show up because that is the container of your program, right? Like it's, it's all of it, right? It's the, this, the safety, the support that you create for your clients. It is the the boundaries that you establish for that that client relationship. It is the 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 framework and the technology that you use to you know deliver and 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 uh, be in this three D space of the transformation. Right, all of that is super important to consider and put together and really think about and you're going to tweak it and you're not you're not going to get it right on the first try right but just keep these into consideration and if you find that a program say you do a six-week program and you found it really difficult or didn't have the transformations you know go back to this look at those three different areas and see where it was misaligned because that's always what it is like if something doesn't work out right it's always a misalignment of one of those 